So you mentioned omega-3 and omega-6. So I thought before we really dive into fish, if it's friend or foe, we'd talk about what exactly is the difference between omega-3 and omega-6 and why do people always talk about them? Well, they're both essential fats, by the way. We, essential fatty acids. Yes, essential fatty acids. Okay. We, need, we need fat. We need fat for our health, our immune system, our brain function. So people think a low-fat diet is better. And I'm saying, no, we need adequate fat if we're going to have an excellent survival into our later years. And we need omega-6 fat, too. We need a certain amount. So the things that are high in omega-6 fat um, are oils and animal fats are high in omega-6, except for fish has more omega-3 fats and less omega-6. And the omega-3 fats are more anti-inflammatory. But the, it's the excess omega-6 fats that are pro-inflammatory. A normal amount is not pro-inflammatory. Right. A normal amount's good. It's a normal amount's good. When people eat a lot of meat or a lot of oils, they're probably getting too much. They're getting too much protein, they're getting too much fat in their diet, and too much omega-6 fat and too much saturated fat. And most of the fat content of the American diet are animal fats and oils, which are both, you could say, negative sources of fat. Because both animal fats and oils contribute to um, chronic disease. Mm -hmm. On a nutritarian diet, our fat intake comes from nuts and seeds, whole foods, and we're trying to balance the omega-6, omega-3 from those whole foods. Because so, greens are rich in, um, green vegetables have fat in them too. Really? Yeah. I feel but like they no have, one talks about but, that. And they're rich in omega-3 fatty acids, especially leafy greens have a lot of omega-3 fatty acids. Oh, I didn't and know the, that. And the ALA in, green, in, in walnuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, and hemp seeds, those, that ALA is the short chain omega-3 fat, which is also good for our health, irrespective of the amount of long chain omega-3 we're exposed to. That's the DHA and EPA. So I'm saying if you had no exposure to ALA, the short chain fats, through green vegetables and flax seeds and walnuts, and you just took fish oil and had your DHA, EPA be high, it still wouldn't be ideal. Because mm. we want to raise the short chain fats, the ALA, and the long chain fats to adequate levels. Okay. And now some people think, some vegans and vegan, you know, who are really excited about veganism and want to promote a plant-based diet, they think that it's okay that you can get all the fats you need from the ALA and that you'll convert enough to make EPA and DHA. So that's a theory, you know. Like saying short chain fatty acids convert to long chain convert fatty acids. Convert to long chain fatty acids adequately. Okay. Adequately. And the, and the truth is they do convert adequately for most of your life, but not adequately to reduce the risks of chronic diseases that develop over a lifetime when people are going to live longer. In generally speaking, you know, people say, oh, it, you don't, vegans don't need to take omega, like DHA, preformed DHA and EPA, because they have, vegans have less, vegans and vegetarians have less dementia than people who are standard American diet and meat eaters. Well, that's an irrelevant argument. It doesn't even make sense because most dementia isn't caused by DHA deficiency or, or, or omega-3 deficiency. Most dementia is caused by atherosclerosis, by eating meat and bacon and cheeseburgers and the lack of phytochemicals and antioxidants in the diet that the brain needs to maintain brain size and brain function. So of course there's going to be There's less... also a small population of vegans compared to the rest of the world. Right. There's a very small population of vegans. So they're not going to be Vegans is less than 1%. Dementia. So it's not going to be a major cause of dementia. And even among vegans, there's going to be still less, much less dementia in the small amount of vegans than there would be in meat eaters because your meat-based diet or a standard diet is more dangerous to the brain than a vegan diet would be when you're not going to eat, especially people who are not eating junk food. Mm -hmm. However, in the vegan population, where you have less dementia because they're not eating cheeseburgers and bacon and they have exposure to phytochemicals, in that population, you're going to see less dementia, but the people who get dementia are those who are going to be living the longest. They have to be healthy eater to live long enough because most of the vegans are going to die before they get dementia if they're not eating healthy enough. Yeah, I know. I also hate mm. that. I feel like in the plant-based community, I hate that there's like a t type of diet that's junk food vegans where they eat just like pasta and like soy protein isolate and they're really mm. not thinking about their G-bombs and these like healthy fresh vegetables. Right. And we're it's not the same diet. And I... It's just different. It's not the same diet, and it's not my niche of what I do or recommend. I'm trying to maximally extend lifespan. It, it's, and it's not the diet for everybody, because a lot of people just want to enjoy their life more, so they think, and, and live shorter lifespan. And if you want to do that, that's fine. You could do that. Like, I'd rather just eat my meat and potatoes eat whatever and die I early. want and die early. Okay, you know, it's, I don't want to take away your right to do what you want. But I like to do what I want, is I want to live healthfully and live longer and enjoy my life for a longer period of time and have the things I enjoy I can do in my later years. So I'm cultivating my recommendations for those plant-based eaters, vegans and near-vegans, who are going to live a long time because they've taken good care of their health. And now what happens to you in your later years is you get weaker, 
your bones could shrink, your muscles could shrink. It's called osteopenia, leading to an sarcopenia can happen. Sarcopenia is loss of muscle tissue. And when you shrink, your brain shrinks too. Is this all from not enough long chain fatty acids, not enough DHA, EPA? No, no, no. The weakness of the bone, you have less calcium absorption and less protein absorption with aging. And we want to maintain good muscle mass and good strength to maintain. That's why I'm trying to maintain good musculature and bone strength when we're younger. So if we're going to live that long to be 100 years old, we have an adequate calcium reserve. And I'm also recommending as calcium absorption goes down, especially in women who have smaller bones to begin with, over the age of 70, their ability to absorb calcium and even to absorb protein goes down. So the Nutritarian diet is giving them a little extra, is making sure the diet has more calcium and protein than the typical plant-based diet. Oh yeah, for sure. More greens, I and, love and we also, I'm also recommending some extra food-based calcium for as women get older. Not a large calcium supplement, but a small amount just to add a little additional calcium to meals. To main, to, we're trying to max lower the possibility of them developing osteoporosis-related fracture in their later life because they're going to live a long time. And we're also talking about frailty and making sure your, your diet is protein sufficient on the plant-based diet and that we're not missing out on some benefits that people could have gotten from eating seafood or, or animal products. Right. The, the beneficial nutrients in seafood and animal products, besides extra enough protein, which is zinc, DHA, iodine, and vitamin D. But particularly zinc and DH, DHA are linked to uh, more resistance to infectious related death. And DHA is protective, not just against brain um, disease, but also against cancer and other causes of all cause mortality, all causes of death. Oh, really? Yeah. So we're saying that low levels of DHA have been associated in scientific studies with increased early life death, so much so that lower levels of omega-3 index have the same risk factor as smoking cigarettes. Did you hear You're, that? That just seems so crazy to me. Wait, yeah. I, okay. Cause you just said a lot. Yeah. You said food-based calcium. So you mean, did you mean supplement-based calcium or? I'm saying not just can calcium carbonate and take Tums, just high dose calcium. I'm not recommending that. I'm saying a little bit of food-based calcium. That means our food-based calcium comes from green vegetables or seaweed. Okay. So we have like a, a, a small amount of calcium added to each meal. So it's like your meal has a little extra calcium for a, for a frail woman growing um, in her later years as calcium bioavailability goes down compared to taking a huge dose of calcium at one time, which floods the body with a spike of calcium that can cause cardiac calcifications or, or, or a joint calcium. Calcifications. So we're just giving a little extra calcium to keep the bioavailability and absorption adequate to support adequate bone structure. And we want the vitamin D to be adequate too. Wait, so you're right. I'm just, you're saying get it, some of it from food, but also supplement with some of it. You're getting most of it from food. Oh, most of it from food. Yeah. And so you just supplement with a little of with it. There's a little extra in the diet as a woman gets over the age of 70. Because you said reserves, which I thought was an interesting concept too. Like I think of a reservoir where you're stocking away some of these vitamins and minerals so that it doesn't affect you poorly so that you have enough to get you through your whole life. Like it's not just going to, you can't just like supplement with it and then have immediate effects. Is that what you're saying? Well, that's true. What you just said. I mean, in other words, we weightlift and that we meaning men, women, nutrition, we weightlift to keep the muscle and bone density high because there is some decrease in bone density that occurs from the ages of 40 on, let's say. It doesn't, you don't just develop a fracture at the age of 70, you develop weakening of your bones for 20, 30, 40 years before you have that fracture or severe osteoporosis. So we're keeping good bone strength all through life. You don't just suddenly lose your bones later in life. So everything is, so we're trying to do the right things all through life to prepare us properly to have the best quality later years of our life. But you said the craziest thing about DHA ever, basically, because I always thought, I always thought, like, I always thought of DHA EPA because I take yours and it's like this beautiful liquid. And I always felt like it was a good protective barrier for my brain. And mm -hmm. your brain's like all these synapses and stuff like that. Me and my crazy mind, I just feel like it's good protection. Right. But you said it's, it affects it all cause all, of death. All cause of death we're talking about. And cancer. Cancer death and heart attack and stroke death. We're saying low levels of the omega-3 index and lack of ability to make sufficient DHA affects your immune system and your entire body, not merely your brain. So that lower levels are associated with higher risk of all-cause mortality, which means cancer death, heart attack death, but basically... In later life or like at any point? Because you said, because sometimes the vegan community is like, you could convert enough. You don't need to supplement with DHA, EPA. Right. 
But you're saying we don't even get it. There's a little bit in green vegetables, but not a lot. Well, the ALA you get, you can convert somewhat, and you you convert enough to get by with a normal lifespan. A normal, you know, people in primitive times lived to be 60 years old. They were dead, you know, accidents, lifespan, you know, they had str uh, whatever they had to cause them to die younger. But we have a unique opportunity in human history to live longer. So you're not, you, these vegans who are not supplementing with DHA are not walking around demented and with, with all of depression. They're producing enough DHA for adequate brain function through most of their life, just like they have adequate bone function for most of their life. But the question is, is that adequate adequacy ideal to maximize human health when you're pushing the envelope of human longevity? In those last 20 years. In the last 30. Ten, last 15 years, last 10 years. Yes, when you get memory loss. And so these are pitfalls we can avoid so it doesn't all go to shit, all of our efforts to eat healthy. Right. So the, so the answer is you probably are, that most people are producing enough omega-3 and even long chain just for like a, a short or an average shortened lifespan because the average lifespan in the modern world is shortened. We're using science to give people the opportunity to maximize their lifespan. And if we can do that, we have to maximize the factors that maintain our excellent health in our later in our later years. But I think what we all have to be reminded of is that you're not saying just to take it in your later years because it's too late it's then. It's too late then, right. That's, so this is very, I have to take it now. This is very confusing for people. I, people hold on, I need to take some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be people, right back. <laughs> yeah, so people will argue everything. They can argue anything. Oh, well, this is it. They, their arguments don't really make sense because they're saying, well, um, well, look, there's an adequate amount. You don't need that much because look, these people aren't, this population isn't sick and they're not taking much. Mm -hmm. but that's not the, that's not the, they don't understand that all those studies on populations that they're showing they don't have a, is, is irrelevant.